In this video, we are going to read in a text file and display it as a map on a grid pattern. It will be extremely simple. We will have one colored block that will represent the player and another will represent a monster and two other tiles will represent um, a very simple environment. So you might be asking, well, <clears throat> What, what am I going to get out of this? Why should I care? Well, once you can write this program, once you understand what's going on, and it's so simple that you will be able to understand what's going on, you'll be able to write something more complex, something with many uh, more types of characters, something with many more types of environments. Um, I'm going to, we're going to go over like writing a tile class and you'll be able to expand that and, and do all sorts of stuff. At least that's the plan. So let's do this in stages. Uh, first, we're going to read in the map that's uh, in a text file right now. We'll go over like creating that. Uh, second, we will place the data from our file in a data structure, in this case, a list. Uh, and now, and at that point, we'll be ready to initialize our game. And then we will create our game loop. Okay, so first, we're going to do our imports. So import pygame, again, can't spell. Uh, and we're going to import our constants. Uh, this is this file, this module here. And we're, we have our screen width and height, number of blocks uh, wide, number of blocks high. That's like the number of blocks in the um, in the map file, like uh, the M in my line stands for mountains and the periods for grass and the the P for the player and the N for a non-playing character like a monster or something. Um, like if you like you can like make some of these I think if the periods is grass you can make some of them into water like the the tilt could stand for water um, you, or swamp or something like that. Uh, yeah so I mean there are a lot of possibilities and right now we're we're starting very simply and we're just, we just want to read in the map file and interpret it, have the program interpret each of those characters as some sort of a color and then render that color to our surface. Okay. Here we go. This is just, uh, I, I make sure everything that I'm going to tell you works. So I've actually already done this program, but I'm just going to, you know, go through it step by step. So I think that'll help make it make more sense. All right. So we've done our imports and now let's set up our main, our main function. Uh, but before I do that, I like to do this. You've probably seen it before. If name uh, dunder main equals dunder main and that just ensures that um, if we're running this uh, as a standalone module that um, the main definition or the main function is going to be called but if we're importing it into another module uh, our main definition is going to be completely ignored I don't really think it's going to be too important for us right now, but um, let's just do it anyway because it's a good programming practice, I think. So now, so now let's let's read our world data, our map data from a text file. So we're going to we'll just so if we don't get an error, we're just going to put pass. So def draw map. Or no, def read map. And I put the map file in here. We're just going to put the call in. So we're going to have this, we're going to read it into a list called world map. Oh, 
can't type. All right. Okay. So let's just make sure that this worked and um, let's save it and run it. Okay, awesome. Uh, but we see there's a problem. Uh, that slash at the end of the, uh, of the lines, that's uh, a new line character. And so now we have to remove it. And an easy way to do that is to use a list comprehension. I'm not going to talk about list comprehensions here because, you know, it can get pretty involved. But I'll leave a link below where you can uh, find out more information about them. So, using the magic of list comprehensions... So this should, yeah. that should be taken care of now. Yep, yeah, see, yay, no new line. All right, so uh, that comprehension just says that for every line in uh, the list world map, uh, strip the new line character from the end of the line and make a new list called world map. Now all we have to do is return our map information and we'll do that. There we go. The next step, step three, is to initialize the game. Now we need to initialize the game and create the surface we'll need to later draw on. So let's write surface and make that up here. Now we're just going to copy this from last time. Now we're not going to, we have a new title, which I put in our constants file. Welcome to Tile World. So, okay, and so we we've made that change, and here we're we we were drawing the um, the background is green. I'm going to change that to like a default color, one a, a color we're not going to use anywhere else in the program, and it's going to be garish and ugly, because I want to know if a background uh, if the background is showing through the tiles. So we're gonna use ugly pink. Um, yeah, and then we need to return the surface because we will need that. All right. Okay, so now we have to do our game loop and uh, fortunately we did most of the code here um, last in the last tutorial so I'm just going to copy that over have to make sure to get our surface in there Okay, so um, now we have to do our game loop, and we've fortunately done most of most of it uh, in the last video. So we're just going to copy that over. 
And what this says is that uh, we have an influent loop, and so while that loop is playing, we're going to constantly scan uh, the events that Pygame is giving us. And if it's of type Pygame quit, then we're going to quit. Uh, we're going to quit Pygame, and then we're going to call system exit. But if it's if we've pressed a key, uh, then we're going to, and if that key was escaped, then we're going to quit as well. And then um, this was from last time we just updated the game. So we we now have the surface being filled with ugly pink. So we should see if we run this, we should see a window and it should be ugly pink. Ah, okay, so let's run here. Uh, 32, line 32. Oh, I need to... I need to pass the surface through. Ah, there we go. Okay. There we go. Yay. Ugly pink. So now we want to, now that we've got our game loop happening and we have our surface showing, uh, we need to actually render the data we have about the map, like from about the world onto our surface. Like, so we need to display it. So we're going to call Draw map. And draw map will need this surface. It will need the world map. So that means that we will have to take the world map. So we're just going to quickly do a couple of for loops. Uh, for i tile contents in tile. Okay, we're just going to make sure that this is doing what we want. So we'll print it out. And I'll explain this in just a sec what I'm doing. Okay, so all we did is like this enumerate. Oh, I have to do it here too. So this enumerate just uh, runs through. It enumerates the contents of, this is gonna be a string. So it enumerates the contents of the string and this enumerates the, um, the contents of map tiles. Uh, and in this case, that's, it's a list of strings. So this will be, you'll, you'll see when we print it out, but it's just going to be basically, um, uh, X and Y coordinates. And then this is going to be our tile contents. So here, let's just save this and print it out. There we go. So you see here, this is just the column in the row being listed along with the contents. So you can find it on the grid quite easily, like if we needed to debug or something. Let's just comment that out. And so now we need to actually draw uh, our rectangles. Pygain gives us these. So, and it's as simple as just asking for it to draw a rectangle. So this is, so we've got our I coordinate and we're gonna times it by the width of the block. And then we need to give, this gives us here so far, the I and the J that gives us the coordinates where it's going to appear on the screen. And now we have to give like just the width and height of the block. So 
that's easy. There we go. And then we need to tell Pygame to draw this. Uh, but before I do that, before I finish that off, we need to, because we're going to have to specify a surface and then we're going to have to specify like a color, like black or whatever. And then we're going to have to like, and then my rect is going to go in this rectangle we've just created. But we, how do we translate the tile? So we're going to have to translate the tile contents into a color. And for that, I'm going to uh, create another function and I'm going to call this uh, get tile color. And we're going to pass in the tile contents. So we need to set the tile color. We're going to have a to a default. And I want this to be a color that I haven't given to uh, any of my tiles yet. So I'm going to choose gold. Uh, so for see here. So now I'm going to pair up uh, the contents of the tile with color. Uh, so if tile contents equals M, make the tile color dark gray. But if the tile contents is period, then make the tile color green. Yeah. So for the P, I just want to pick something that something else has or, or that I, I, I originally when I, I ran through this tutorial, I originally made it blue, but I thought, well, you know, I mean, that blue is water. So instead, let's make the player black. So tile contents equals, what's the other one? N. So this is, I think of as, as our mob, as our, like, um, the monster. So let's make that one red. Okay, so now we've got our tile color, and we'll know if, if for some reason, like if we change something in the map and we forget to add it here, uh, we'll see a gold tile and we'll know that something's gone wrong. So let's return the tile color. And here we put in, there we go. Okay, so now we save this and run it. Yay! So we have our mountains, which are dark gray, like ringing around the, the edge of the, of the surface. And we have our red square, which represents the monster. And we have our black square, which represents the table and the, the green grass. And so there we go. One finishing touch I want to add is to add a grid that um, I think, you know, would, would sort of be a nice touch. It makes it feel a bit more retro, perhaps more like a board game. We're going to, I'm just going to add this here. I'm just going to copy this over. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you can see what's happening there. We're just drawing lines across the, across the drawing surface. So we'll put this, uh, we have to put the grid on top of the, draw the grid on top of the map. There we go. Yay. So that's it. Next time, my plan is to create four classes, a game class, a map class, a tiled class, and if there's time, a player class. We might save the player class for the next video if it turns out, if it turns out to be too much content. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.